Jay Z was one of the ones that said, he, you know, he don't think I get the lyrical credit that I deserve because of the uh, visual of mm -hmm. the visuals. So you know, the the answer to that is like people ask me, you know, why don't you think get the get the credit? It's I play too goddamn much. That's mm -hmm. what I do. You know, and I wouldn't have it any other way. It's That's you. why my name is Ludacris. It's beyond crazy. It's wild. It's ridiculous. I like uh, post effects and augmenting reality, big ass shoes, a big ass chain, <coughs> and mm -hmm. bobblehead and all that. So it's like, I get it. You know, I can't be mad at it. I just have to show the multifaceted aspects of myself. And I actually love that. Good afternoon. I pray that you're feeling blessed and highly favored on today. Getting right into things, man. So I was sitting back thinking the other day and I actually saw a clip which caused my mind to even be thinking about this where Luda was speaking on Jay-Z telling him that in all essence he would never get the respect that he deserves as a lyricist because of his over the top visuals. And I thought to myself, this just isn't right. I come up in what I consider to be the golden age of hip hop, running from the early 90s to the late 2000s. I say this because in the 80s, Hip hop was still in its infant stages, filled with positivity and love for black people. But the 90s and 2000s really shaped and gave way to what we see today, which is a lane wide open to where everybody can get money. And it actually became the main desirable occupation for young black men across the board. Now, I say I'll have to say that I have heard and appreciated so many of the artists from my time period, especially since the way we consumed music was different, much different than what it is today. You would literally play the same album for an entire year and the music had plenty of replay value. In essence, it had more substance, so to speak. And at the forefront of this entire movement coming out of the South was Ludacris. While not the pioneer that Outkast and the Dungeon family was, but to me, he helped push the South and gain us credibility for our lyrical abilities on a mainstream platform, arguably more than any other person from this era. Luda was a radio killer before Dream. Every feature I've ever heard Ludacris on, every single that he has ever dropped that has made it to the radio has had marketability and top-notch lyrics, similes, metaphors, alliteration, and just an overall Southern flavor that culminated into making Luda what I deem to be a legendary artist. Aside from this, he's definitely had classic albums under his belt with the word of mouth. Man, anybody from my era that's, from, that's my age, I guarantee you, if they was listening to rap, I don't care if they was a white boy, whatever, and they know that album, and they damn near know it word for word. I'm just keeping it real with you. Aside from this, it doesn't stop there. Every album, let's go before that. You know, let me not forget the debut album, Back for the First Time, Chicken and Beer, Red Light District, Release Therapy, which arguably is probably my favorite album from him, because, you know, just from a well-rounded standpoint, he did his thing on that. But... If you don't know these albums or you haven't heard them, I would strongly encourage you to do your research because you are truly missing out. Honestly, as far as visuals go, his style has been bitten many times over. With the overall theme today is to make enjoyable, funny videos that make you laugh to go along with the music. I think this claim is also evident because he is still relevant today. He's still looking young and will still kill a freestyle on you whenever he get ready to. He just got it, man. And, you know, I appreciate him for his musical contributions and definitely wanted to take the time to shout him out. And let's not forget that he also introduced us to the likes of Shauna, Player Circle, more notably 2 Chains, TD 2 Chains that is. He had Phil Mob for a minute, and he also had Chingy. So he did his thing as a musician and also as a label owner. So let's keep that in mind. And if anything, I believe his popularity in the Fast and the Furious franchise, while that has definitely did wonders for his pockets, you know, I definitely feel that it is actually tarnished in return his musical legacy because this new generation knows him more for that than they do for his musical prowess. So, you know, I just had to come educate the people right quick, man, who didn't know about, you know, Luda, the Luda Meister, you know what I mean? But y'all jump in the comment section and let me know what y'all think. And until next time, certainly be blessed. One.